Hi, my name is Megan Crone, and I am an academic writing coach and editor. I am going to use this video to show you how to create and format a table in APA 7 style. So what I want to point out first is that for all tables and figures, you need to mention them in your text. So what I'm going to do first to make sure I don't forget to do that is add in where it's most relevant. Uh, C table one. You could also mention it within a sentence, but what's really common is just to say uh, C table, whatever number you're on uh, in the text. Tables in APA 7 are usually numbered in numerical order in the order they appear. It's even fine to do that if you have different chapters. You don't have to do 1.1, 1.2. You can do that as long as the numbering is consistent throughout the document. I like to just do numbers consecutively throughout the whole document because it makes it easier, especially once you get into more complicated formatting, like putting in automatic labels for your tables and figures, which I'll cover in another video. For this one, I'm just going to do the one table. So I just want to add in one table right here. Uh, in APA 7, you're going to place your tables and figures immediately after the paragraph where they're mentioned. So you're not going to do it partway through. So if I had put C table C table one right here. I'm not going to stick that table right in the middle of the paragraph. I'm going to put it at the end of the paragraph. If your table will not fit all in one page, you can put it on the next page because it's best to have your table all in one page. So for this one, I'm going to start with the table number and then the table needs a title. In APA 7, the table is going to be bolded here, and then the title, the label for the table, is going to be bolded and in italics. Right after that is where I'm going to create the table. The easiest way to do that is just to go to your Insert tab here at the top of Word. You can see right here there's a drop down for adding a table. This is the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to add five rows and then five columns for my table. The nice thing is you can always add and subtract these later. So if I go to this last row here, I can right click. There's all these options that pop up. I can put insert one below, above, left, right. So there's lots of ways to insert more rows and columns if you need them. You can also delete rows, columns, and cells. Um, deleting the cells is a little more complicated, so I'll get into that in another video. Um, but this is, makes a very simple way to delete columns, rows, and even the whole table. One other thing to note is that my table, by default, since it's in the middle of my text here, is going to be double spaced. Rarely do you want a table to be double spaced because you want it to be nice and concise. So what I'm going to do is go to single spacing here. The other way to do that even quicker is using this little button here, uh, which I could just switch to single space. Uh, the reason I like to go to paragraph is because then you can see if somehow they're snuck in a before or after spacing, those should be set to zero. So now I'm ready to fill in my table. I wanted to note that tables in APA 7, you only really want to use them when you can display a lot of information very concisely within the table instead of describing it in the narrative. However, all tables in APA 7 should be, you should be able to remove them from the text and still understand the whole text. So they can't contain any vital information that isn't contained in the text. It's really kind of supplemental information or a different way of displaying the information that's much easier to read. So for example, um, numbers are often in tables, especially once you get into statistical analyses, uh, because they're much easier to see in a table, but you cannot still understand, describe and understand the meaning um, by saying something as statistical significance. You don't have to give the exact uh, numbers for those to write about them. So the table just gives the supplemental information of the exact numbers. So for this one, I'm just doing some made up information that fits my made up study. I'm going to use these various worlds. Generally in tables, this last line is used for a total. So I'm adding in my gathering places. So we've got pubs and restaurants and shops. 
I'm spelling it that way since it's spelled that way a lot in fantasy worlds. And just creepy spots. Oh, spots. All right, so then I'm going to fill in my numbers. Please note these numbers are not accurate to these worlds or these books or these series. Uh, I am just doing these for an example for this paper. All right, so I've got all my information here. However, you can see none of this is formatted quite correctly for APA 7. So what I'm going to do first is format this table. The easiest way to do that is to highlight the whole thing and then use these little boxes here, the border boxes. What I like to do is remove all the borders. Then I'm going to add in the borders that are required for APA style. So I'm going to add one in the top, one on the bottom, and then I'm going to highlight the, the row that's full of the labels for the columns. Please note this row is required, so you have to have your columns and your rows labeled in APA 7. So now this would work perfectly fine. The only thing that I'm missing is that table one here is hanging out on the previous page. To change that, I can highlight it, go to paragraph, and go to keep with next, and that will pull it there. There's some uh, more advanced formatting you can do once you get into the references and you want to create automatic uh, labels and tags for your tables and figures, but I'm not going to show that in this video. So this would work totally fine, but I wanted to note some things that you can do with your tables in APA 7. So for example, let's just say that this, this uh, label right here were much, much longer. And I've got all this space, so there's no reason to uh, double up on these lines. So what I can do is pull that over so that it's taking up less space again. However, now my columns are not equally distributed. They, that's not a rule in APA 7, but it just looks a lot nicer uh, when things are lined up nicely. So the nice thing in Word is that there are ways to do this automatically, so you don't have to sit here and try to find that little, th that little symbol and then try to eyeball it and see if that works right, and you don't have to go into formatting table and then enter the numbers. There's an even easier way to do that. You just go up here. As soon as you work with the table, there's table design and table layout. And then click on the layout and then go to distribute columns. And then it nicely puts them into the same size columns. Uh, you can also center these if you like the way that looks a little bit better. So if your words are much uh, different lengths, that can help polish it up and make it look a little bit nicer. Um, so there's lots of ways that you can play with how your table looks um, and still stay within APA 7 style. Another thing I wanted to note is that you, you can and should uh, enter notes if you need them. So uh, a note in APA 7 is going to be double spaced still and a note might be something like doesn't quite fit with this table, but let's say you have your uh, sample size in here. Anytime you put in a statistical um, statistical letter, then you're going to put it in a, italics. So you might want to put that. You might have other information about the statistical tests that you ran that you would put in a note. Um, those would all go in this bottom part and again, double spaced. Uh, one other thing to note is if you have a ton of information and your table won't quit, quite fit on one page, in APA 7 you can go as low as 10 point font. Um, and still fit in with the formatting guidelines. So that if you had a ton of, or let's just say all of these pieces have really long names, you would be able to change this a little bit so that you could uh, fit it all in on one page. I'm going to leave it in 12 point font since that's easier to read. One last thing that I want to mention is that you can uh, do a couple things just in case you have additional information. So I'm going to insert a row above. And let's say I want to display this information slightly differently where I want to put all of the eating establishments together in one column. So what I would do is add a, add a row for that. I can take these two cells. I'm going to right click and merge them. And that way I can put eating establishments and those fall under 
this exact one and I might want to make sure those are all centered um, but this isn't quite formatted for APA 7 I have to change this slightly so I'm going to get rid of the border under pubs and restaurants and instead I'm going to put an underline there so this would be a weird case where you would do that. It happens more often when you have a whole bunch of different statistical stat tests. So let's say you have your N, you have your percentage, or that could be your mean. Again, we want to make sure this is italicized um, so that you could have your different categories under your columns, but then have different statistical tests for each of those columns as well, and that it's easy to see which ones fall under which others. So there's lots of different ways uh, to do a little bit extra formatting or to um, change it a little bit to fit your needs and what you need to display. Uh, you can also, it, let's say you had, um, I'm going to add some more rows underneath. One, two, three, four. So let's say these were um, pre, well, I've, I guess I want to do it the formatting correctly. So let's start. You'll understand why I'm adding all of these in just a moment. So let's say that I had different waves of data or different series of data. So I'm going to merge all of these cells. So again, right click, merge them all. So I'm going to say pre 480, right? I mean, these are not accurate uh, totals anyway. I'm going to do the same thing here. Um, merge these cells. Say post 480. So this could also be wave one, wave one, wave two, just like I did with before with my eating establishments example, I'm going to underline these so it's clear that they're not part of the data, they're extra labels. I'm now going to take my different rows and I'm just going to make up numbers. I don't know, I'm making it harder on myself by adding things up. So this works, but it doesn't quite uh, make things stand out as much because the total might be important. So in this case, if you have different totals, you can make those stand out a little bit more if you want to combine the table together so that all of the information is together. Um, and again, nice and concise. Um, everything is labeled, all of your rows are labeled, your columns are labeled, and then we've got our two different waves of information. We've got our note, which again, this doesn't make sense for this table, um, but this could be a note, um, or it could, it could include source information. Uh, if you're pulling information from another source, make sure that you include any permissions or copyrights that are needed. That's generally more necessary for figures, um, but if you're taking things directly from another source, uh, you may want to do that as well. So that's all I'm going to do for formatting tables for this lesson. I will go into more depth about other aspects of tables and figures in another video. Thank you.